Hey guys, my name is Stan and welcome to another video. In this one, we're gonna be taking a look at this right here. This is the uh, AMD 6900 XT Liquid Devil from Power Color. Uh, this is just as about as quick of a 6900 XT as you can buy. Um, and this is, being the Liquid Devil version, it's got the custom EK block on it. So I'm extremely excited. Let's get into it. The presentation of this Liquid Devil case box is really nice. Uh, inside we've got this cardboard and it looks like uh, it's got some information about the 6900 XT. Uh, it tells you about RGB, bio switch, and the backplate and the EK water block. So we'll put this to the side for a moment here. Also in here, we've got some goodies, some information. This also looks like EK standard plugs for their water blocks and their little tool. We've also got some little things here. You're one of us now. I don't actually use dyes all that much uh, these days. This is the EK Cryo Fuel Red, Yellow, and Blue. Uh, I find dyes just end up staining and I always end up running with distilled water. But anyway, that aside here, this is the GPU and it is one hefty GPU. Now this isn't just any GPU, this is can be considered like a Kingpin from EVGA or a Strix, ROG Strix. So it's a custom, completely custom 6900 XT. It's got a really nice back plate. Um, and the water block is a custom EK water block. You've got the acrylic, you've got the nickel, but then you also have, I wanna say this is a metal plate on here, which um, kind of breaks up the boring nickel plexi look of the GPU. This version right here, this is the 6900 XT uh, Liquid Devil. There is a higher version or higher bend version, which is called the Ultimate. Now that version is a even higher bend version of this card, or of this core. Uh, I don't know if this is binned at all or if they're separated into like a highest bid and a high bin. Um, if you know anything about that, comment down below. But this right here with the water cooling uh, should give you pretty good overclocks. And from what I'm reading online, people are getting 2700, 2800 or more uh, megahertz on the core on these GPUs. Get that first peel. All right, let's take a closer look at this card. So this card has the standard 6900 XT outlets, the USB-C, uh, HDMI, and a couple display ports. Yep, that's about right. Uh, it does have three PCIe connectors, and it's from what I read, this basically is unlocked on power, power draw. Uh, Voltage-wise, it's still locked, but or blocked by the BIOS, but the BIOS power draw is virtually unlocked. There is also a BIOS switch right here. This is um, the OC BIOS, which uh, allows you to flip the switch and run a different BIOS. And the back of the card, man, this, this back plate is, looks great. Uh, it's raised and this is machined and it's, it's got that um, machined feel to it too. Top-notch quality, top-notch presentation of this card. Uh, you really can't ask for any more from a GPU. It looks amazing. So what I'm gonna do here is go ahead and install it into this vertical GPU mount. I've got the graphics card installed. I've actually done a bunch of testing already and I've even done some overclocking as well. So uh, a little bit more about the system actually. This is a Threadripper system. 
It is, uh, it's got a 3960X 24 core CPU and it's got dual loops in there. So I've got one dedicated for the CPU, one dedicated for the GPU. Uh, the GPU loop has two 480 millimeter radiators, uh, 60 millimeters thick. So push pull, it's got a lot of cooling uh, potential. So this is pretty much as good as you can get in terms of water cooling uh, with radiator space. Um, right off the bat, when I've put the card in with everything set to default, booted it up, installed the drivers, the card clocked around 2400 megahertz, 24 to 2450, bounced around there uh, under a completely default settings. And this is primarily limited by uh, power draw. So there's a hard stop at 300 watts in the default settings. When you switch over to manual overclocking, that's where you get to play with all the settings. And finally, the settings that I ended up going with was of course 15% power in draw increase. So that gives you an overhead about four, 345 watts to play around with. And I've dialed in the core at 2600 to 2700 megahertz, minimum maximum, with uh, the memory slider all the way up to maximum. Uh, which is I think like 2150 megahertz on the memory and of course voltage all the way up to maximum so basically I've maxed everything out uh, with and then the core at 2600 to 2700 megahertz now in game or in benchmark that translates out to be about 2650 megahertz give or take and of course you are locked at 300 to 340 watts of power draw in this situation at these settings, uh, the numbers that I were seeing was actually very close to a G RTX 3090. For example, the best score that I was able to achieve on Time Spy Extreme with uh, the setup here was 10,442 points. And you can see that the average clock frequency was right around 2640 um, and average temperature right at 45 degrees Celsius. So this is pretty good. Now. With the exact same system with when I had the 3090 with Founders Edition um, air cooled, the best I was able to get was almost the same score. So you can see here, this is 10,408 points with that 3090. And in that system, the clock frequency was right at 2000, just about 2000 megahertz. So uh, I think that's a pretty good example of exact same system with a 3090 fe versus the 6900 xt liquid devil water cool uh, it pretty much scores are the same across the board once you're looking at maximum overclock of the 3090 versus maximum overclock of this card one thing i did try was use more power tools to try to unlock the power limit uh, which i entered 350 watts with a 15% overclock, so that would give you about 400 watts to play around with. And indeed, the settings that I previously talked about, the maximum power draw that I did see spiked to almost 380 to 390 watts. It never actually hit 400, but uh, it was pretty darn close. And even in that situation, the clocks didn't actually get much better. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, Normally under most benchmarks and most gaming situations, you don't really pull that much more power. Uh, it's only in a few test scenarios. There's a few couple benchmark tests where this scene draws extreme amounts of power. And specifically the Time Spy Extreme uh, scene number two seems to like to draw like 380, 390 watts. And uh, even though it's stable, I wasn't able to actually push more frequency past that 2650. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, uh, it looks like my chip, my card is, tops out right around 2650 to 2700. It, it just can't go any higher. Uh, and this is, I think, primarily due to voltage being locked down. Uh, the voltage slider maxes out at uh, 1.175. Um, can't go any higher than that. And I can't edit the BIOS in a way that allows more voltage, even though uh, power draw can, you know, power wattage you can increase, but voltage you cannot. 
So this is a situation where, where with power draw completely unlocked up to 400 watts, that's where the triple eight pin does actually start to make sense because triple eight pin, uh, two eight pins is what, 300 watts and then a 75 from the PCIe bus. So 375 is two eight pins. Uh, with three eight pins, that gets you over 500 watts. So um, yeah, you're actually pulling more than 375, close to 400. So and I can probably justify that third eight pin, but still I would have liked to see a little bit more voltage uh, on that core because I know the 6900 XT Liquid Devil Ultimate Edition does allow you to push all the way up to 1.2 volts. And, but then the core on that is a special bin, special skew. It's a little bit different than the one I've got here. So, hey, that's what it is, right? So some last thoughts. Uh, the bio switch on this card is really just that. It's just a switch because the two uh, BIOSes are very similar. Um, right off the top of my head, I think the only difference between the two is one BIOS is uh, limited at 2365, while the other BIOS has a cap of 2385, which is a 20 megahertz difference. There's no power limit difference. There's no uh, voltage limit difference. It's just a frequency difference of 20 megahertz. Big whoop, right? So. Uh, I would have liked to see Power Color come out with a true XOC BIOS where you know you could push 400 watts, you could push 1.2 or more volts, but I'm not holding my breath because even the Liquid Devil Ultimate Edition doesn't have that much more extreme overclocking uh, you know, settings for the BIOS, so uh, I guess that's that. To answer the question, is it worth picking up this card? Uh, it comes down to a situation of can you actually get your hands on this card? Do you even want to install a uh, water block on your card? If you don't, this is a great option because the performance, you know, pushing 2600 megahertz, 2700 megahertz, if you get a good bin, um, or if you're considering the ultimate Liquid Devil Ultimate, those cards are still pushing 28, 2900 megahertz. Um, that's still substantially more than a reference edition non-water cooled uh, 6900 XT. So, uh, you know, just hopefully this gives you another data point of what you might be getting or what you can potentially expect if you pick up one of these cards. If you like this video, make sure to hit that like button. And if you want to see more graphics cards, see more computer tech videos, perhaps consider subscribing. As always, my name is Stan and I'll see you guys in the next one.